I ain't gonna lie to y'all. You know it's bad when you gotta deploy the National Guard to the New York subway system. Y'all heard this? Check this out. New York Governor Kathy Hochul is calling in back up to combat transit crime right here in New York City. She's deploying 750 National Guard members and 250 state it's and MTA cops to help the NYPD patrol train stations and assist with checking bags following a series of violent incidents. This happening while several teens were injured in a mass shooting near a Philadelphia bus stop. This happened just this week. Joining us now is retired NYPD Chief Wilbur Chapman and former Detroit Chief of Police Ralph Godby to discuss. Gentlemen, good morning. I'm so happy to have you on the show. Welcome. Good morning, Anna. How are you? I'm great. Happier now that we're discussing it. Wilbur, I'm going to start with you. New York City subway system, you know, it's one of the busiest transit hubs in the country. However, mm -hmm. year to date, you see in that graph, transit crimes have gone up 13%. But do you think deploying the National Guard in our subway system is necessary? No, what they need to do is, you know how you go to like certain malls? and they have like a police station within the mall, it could be just inside the mall or right outside on one of the storefronts, like it's, it's a police station there. That's what they need to put down there, man. Well, this is the second time the National Guard's been deployed. Uh, right after 9-11, it was certainly a great aid to the NYPD and, and to the people of the city of New York. Uh, by inspecting bags and looking for explosive devices. However, this time it's a bit different. Uh, the people who are committing crimes on the subways are, are not carrying explosive devices. They're using knives and guns, particularly knives. And bag searches uh, will not necessarily serve the purpose because you'll have individuals who can easily secrete gun, uh, guns or knives uh, in their jacket or, or, or pants pockets and not be subject to the searches. The visible presence is helpful, but really the, the work that needs to be done and continues to be done is by the members of the Transit Bureau of the NYPD who have the expertise and the experience and understand uh, how the 472 subway stations that, ex that exist operate, their physical layout, and really taking advantage of the fact that they do this every day. Uh, they are the ones who will be responsible and certainly have the expertise to uh, combat this increase in crime. Yeah, we're looking at video of some of these incidents and they're so hard to watch. Ralph, do you think the idea of a National Guard in a city as big as New York City uh, make people feel safer? Or, or are they more worried about that crime when they see the presence? Well, I think it's, it's more of a feeling and Chief will tell you that the perception of crime sometimes can be more daunting than, rea than the reality. And the reality is we have so many different mediums now. Everybody, and Hannah, I know this has to be unnerving to professional journalists, but everybody that has an Instagram account, a TikTok account, uh, a Facebook account, everybody is a journalist now. And things that Chief and I used to see back in the day, um, you know, daily as, 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 as practitioners, People are now exposed to every day. New York, yeah, you getting you getting it, the up close and personal version with cell phones nowadays, and like he said, Instagram and TikTok, and 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 Twitter or X, whatever you want to call it. Now you're getting the first hand, first person view of it of what's happening on these instances and stuff like that, man. And like I think the last thing I saw on a video from a subway was somebody getting shot. New York City is still one of the safest, it, 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 the safest large cities, United States of America. And even with the uptick, um, it is still not um, a, 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 a subway system that people should necessarily be afraid of. But just the exposure to so much news and crime news and video now, the perception of crime and its reality, they're two different things right now. I think you make an excellent point that we're seeing this more and more because of social media. I'm so glad you mentioned that. Well, as we mentioned, crime is an issue nationwide. In 2020, governors across the country faced criticism for bringing in the National Guard to protect cities. Of course, that was following George Floyd protests. How is this different? Well, in, in terms of doing protests, again, local police, uh, w whether it's the New York City Police Department or any other major city police department, have people within their ranks who are well-trained to handle any kind of disorder or demonstration mm -hmm. and a better prepared. 
The National Guard and the State Police are both excellent organizations, but they're a bit miscast in these kinds of roles because they do not have the, the understanding of the conditions on the streets that happen on a daily basis that give the local police an expertise and an advantage in dealing with the public or the active demonstrators who are involved in, in this activity. Ralph, I mentioned that shooting at the Philly bus station. I have less than a minute, but what needs to be done nationally here? Well, nationally, we really need to have a lot of intentionality around police hiring uh, and then utilizing some of the tools that we have available to us in a more deliberate way. Uh, but the reality is, unfortunately, there are certain things that, absent some major social change and gun reform legislation, we're just not going to be able to do anything but respond to. If you take public transit, there's a decent chance you've already noticed them on your morning commute. National Guard members doing random bag checks in the subway system. This is all part of the plan the governor unveiled yesterday to combat the perception of rising subway crime. Morgan Mackay is live at Grand Central Station with the details on this rollout. Morgan, we said perception, but is there actually a rise in subway crime? Hey, Chris and Bianca. So I'm here at Grand Central, and right now there's not a huge police presence. There are a few officers here around the subway turnstiles, but no bag checks. We did run into a few National Guard members earlier today who said that might start around 4 p.m. at this location today. But again, a lot of mixed emotions about the rollout of this new initiative. So Governor Kathy Hochul yesterday announced that she will be deploying around 750 National Guard members and around 250 state police police troopers to conduct random bag searches at some of the city's busiest subway stations. Hochul would not say how long she plans to use the National Guard and state police for this new operation, but this will be on top of the additional thousand NYPD officers Mayor Eric Adams sent to patrol the subway starting in February. This comes as subway crime is up 13 percent compared to 2023, with assaults on the transit system up 11 percent. Now, according to the NYPD, 2023 has had the highest number of subway assaults since at least 1996. Now, because of the uptick in violence in the subway system, Hochul unveiled a five-part subway safety plan yesterday that includes a new bill that would ban people from riding public transit for three years if they are convicted of a violent crime against another passenger. Hochul says she understands that people are afraid to take the subway at times and hopes that an increased police presence and added security security cameras will help people feel safer. We have had a series of high profile crimes that have shaken the security of New Yorkers. Statistically, it's not what it used to be. It's better, much better. But I'm not going to talk about statistics. I'm going to talk about feelings and emotions and the psychology of a city. I want more people on the subways. We're not quite back to the pre-pandemic levels. And if people are feeling unsafe and won't come, then I have to do something about it. So Hochul was asked also on Good Day what happens if someone refuses a bag check. She said that they can then leave, go home, and not ride the subway. But just so you guys technically know, people can refuse a bag check and they can just go to a different subway station. Reporting live, I'm Morgan Mackay. Chris and Bianca, back to you. We do want to begin tonight with the rising crime rate in New York on America's largest subway Everywhere. system. Everybody with millions of commuters it. and tourists riding every day. Well, now, an extraordinary new approach by the governor there to bring down crime in the Big Apple. The Democratic governor announcing a major crackdown. Hundreds of National Guard will begin oh, tonight nuts. patrolling subway platforms and checking riders' bags. The show of force comes after re a recent spike in crime in the underground transit, including three killings since January. And even today, just hours after the announcement, a train conductor reported that she was hit in the head with a glass bottle. CBS's Elaine Quijano spoke with subway riders about the new security. New York Governor Kathy Hochul's plan is aimed at improving subway rider safety, adding 1,000 more personnel, including 750 National Guard troops, to help with patrols and random bag searches. Anyone looking to do harm or spread fear on our subways, you will be caught. The move comes after a more than 46% spike in That's not the thing, though. What is going to be the punishment? That's the question. Because you know you can't sustain this for too, for long. You can't have the National Guard there. How long do you think you're going to be able to have them at, at your disposal? So the, I guess, I don't know. 
you, you gotta be swift. You you got it gotta be harsh. I mean, it gotta be very, very harsh so they don't do it again. Like your actions, your response, everything has to be harsh. Major crimes in the city's transit system in January compared to 2023. Across the country, CBS News polling shows crime is a top concern for voters. But data shows crime is down in big cities, including New York, Chicago, and Los Angeles. In the daytime, I feel safe. Nighttime, I don't know, man. Because I be saying, where's the cops? You don't see them that much. Already this year, there have been several high-profile crimes in New York's subway system. And what was the punishment for those crimes? That's what we need to know. What was the punishment? Including three killings and a brutal attack on a conductor. But you have to feel safe in the system because I know how it plays on your psyche when you hear about some random acts of violence. Danny Perlstein is with the transit advocacy group Riders Alliance. With stationing troops there, that's going to create a heightened climate of fear of the subway. It's not getting at the root causes of the problems. The governor's plan does include $20 million for mental health outreach. In the morning, you see nothing but the homeless on the trains. I don't feel safe. Sometimes I just take the bus. More than 3 million people ride the New York City transit system every day. But Nora, that is down from a peak of 5 million people per day before the pandemic. All right, I know that's controversial. We'll be watching. New York City commuters are now seeing uniformed soldiers on subway platforms. Governor Kathy Hochul's decision to deploy 750 National Guard troops to patrol the subway follows a recent string of violent attacks in the nation's largest public transit system. Here is some of what Governor Hochul told us yesterday on Morning Joe about her decision. I can show you all the statistics in the world that say you should feel safe because the numbers are better. But you're the mom on the subway with your baby in a stroller. You're the parent putting your kid on the subway to go to high school. You're that senior citizen going to a doctor appointment. If you're anxious that I'm the governor of the state of New York, I'm concerned about it. And if you feel better walking past someone in a uniform to make sure that someone doesn't bring a, a knife or a gun on the subway, then that's exactly why I did it. Governor Hochul yesterday on Morning Joe and joining us now, the NYPD's chief of patrol, John Shell. Chief Shell, thanks for being with us again this morning. We appreciate it. So How are uh, you before, great to be even here? These, uh, before even these National Guardsmen were put into the subways, along, by the way, with 250 uh, state troopers, um, the crime was down because of your surge of NYPD officers down into the subway over the last month or so. But what is this additional 1,000 soldiers and officers mean to the safety of the subway? Well, listen, we greatly appreciate the help from the governor. She's been a great partner with the mayor uh, in crime reduction in the subway. But I just want to you know, put it in, put it into perspective. We don't want a couple high-profile events taking over the narrative of what's going on in transit. So I'll just take you a walk back. In January, crime is up 48 percent. That's a big number, 48 percent. Mm -hmm. And the reason I was is we lost resources from last January. But like you just said, in the last five weeks, with the, with the people, the cops we put back into the system, in the last five weeks, crime is down 12 percent. That's six crimes a day we're trying to battle. So that's the numbers, but people need to feel safe. So we'll take the help with a late approach where people see the National Guard, see our cops, see the bag checks, but it's a, a layer, not a magic bullet, but it, it, it shows the layers. And crime is coming down in transit, and we think in a couple of weeks we'll be in, we'll be in a good place. Now, Chief, you know, uh, yesterday when we had the governor on, we talked about this. I, I thought it was a great thing. Yeah. Help help the cops. Help NYPD needs all the help they can get. And, and, and like you said, we'll take it. But then I asked her about uh, just, I, I think, the stupidity of bell reform and what it, the, the, the hell it caused New Yorkers and especially the truly disadvantaged New Yorkers. And Rev and I talk about this all the time. People of color have suffered disproportionately because some woke people in Park Slope and in Albany got together and decided, hey, we're, we're going to change human nature. Well, Willie and the governor and I, we were talking yesterday about recidivism and how it's actually, it's not this great huge class of new criminals it's it's a small group of people doing the same things over and over again talk about that and that's and that's that's their main point about everything we're doing here 
When bail reform was for, for, put forth, I had some good pieces in it. Like I said last month, here, people shouldn't sit in jail for stealing a bag of chips because right, they, exactly. they can't make $100 bail. Speedy trial. People deserve a speedy trial. Right. And then within bail reform, they made some reforms to where the judge has a power to keep someone in. If someone commits a crime against a personal property and they do it twice, the second time around, the judge, bail can be asked for and bail should be set. The only thing with bail reform that hasn't changed yet that must be changed is our opinion is the discovery for the district attorney's office. It's really hampering their ability to go after the recidivists. So let's talk recidivists for one moment. I'm going to give you two numbers that are going to make you feel uncomfortable. So retail theft, the big problem we had here in, this, in the city last year, is coming down, but still a problem. If I told you 542 people were locked up for theft in New York City last year, and they've been arrested 7,600 times, that's <laughs> crazy. Recidivism. The transit conductor that got his neck slice last week while he peeked out the window to do his job. Last year, 30 Wait, what? Got his neck sliced? Yeah, people are afraid to get on on a, on the subway. Fam just got his neck sliced. You think your numbers is going to make me feel good? Oh, crime is down. So what? He just got his neck sliced. Like, bro, this is, this, this, I don't know, man. This world is out of control, man. Out of control. 38 people were locked up for assaulting train workers. Most of them were conductors. They were arrested over 1,100 times. So if the recidivism was working, when the process works, it's great. When the cops do their job and the DA does their job and the judge does their job, the elected officials do their job, the process works. So... Yeah. They, some of these criminals, the numbers I gave you, should not have opportunity to commit more crimes. And recidivism is the issue. And again, it's just a very small segment of the population in New York City. Yeah, it's a small segment. Rev, you and I talk about it all the time. We talk about the, the fact that there's some, like, like the chief said, there's some parts of bail reform that really work, that are really needed. There are other parts of bail reform that just make New York a less safe place. And, 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 and makes, ma makes neighborhoods a less safe place, especially for people of color. And um, it just, um, and, and wasn't interesting, she also talked, the governor yesterday talked about how the judges down here need to be tougher. Because she said, you look at the numbers upstate, they don't have the rotating doors. The judges down here need to toughen up on crime. Now at 5.30, Governor Hochul announced a plan this morning to make the subway system safer following a rash of violence. It includes flooding the system with National Guard troops and state police to conduct bag checks. And joining us now is New York City Mayor Eric Adams. Mayor Adams, thank you so much for being with us this Let's afternoon. hear what he has to say. Thank you. Great to be with you. And Mr. Mayor, what are New Yorkers going to see at their stations? And how would you assure New Yorkers that this won't devolve into racial profiling like the New York Civil Liberties Union is already warning about? Well, there's, there's a combination of things, and we, we need to be extremely clear. Uh, New York City is the safest big city in America. Um, in 2023, we saw a decrease in subway crimes. January was the first month that you saw an uptick. We responded to that by put, put, placing 1,000 officers in the system, changed it towards the 12-hour tours, and you saw a 15% decrease in the month of February. So you do have these upticks from time to time. But to answer uh, the uh, uh, Civil Liberties Union's question directly, random check. Predetermined number of people walk through that predetermined number, you're going to stop and go through, do a bag check. So it's not that the police officers are going to be able to decide. It's a random check unless there's cause to have an increase of suspicion on someone's behavior or actions. And Mayor Adams, we know these bag checks wouldn't flag some of the items that offenders have used as weapons in the past. Nope. For example, umbrellas, a metal water bottle like the one that you, was used to hit a performer over the head. So how do you address that kind of issue? And you do it by what police are doing now and how we got to the point of seeing this decrease in crimes throughout not only above ground but below ground uh, responded. Arrest are up. Uh, taking action on quality of life issues are clear. Uh, when you look at those like that incident that you just talked about, uh, you're dealing with someone with a mental health uh, issue. We must deal with giving teeth to the Kendra's law so we can go after due to involuntary uh, removals. We were committed from the beginning of the administration to remove uh, those who de dealt with severe mental health issues and give them the support that they need and not have them on our subway system as we removed all those encampments that were in our system. 
Now, you have said that, that repeat offenders are a big problem here. The governor today said that she'd push for a bill that would let judges ban riders convicted of violent transit crime from the system. That's going to take some time. It's an uphill battle. So what should the city do in the meantime to address that serious issue? Well, exactly, uh, again, what our office is doing. There's, there is a partnership in the criminal justice apparatus. You have uh, the police officers who need to make arrests when necessary, the prosecutors prosecuted, and the judges make the determination if someone should remain on our streets or off our streets. If that synergy and combination is not operating correctly, you're going to have an imbalance. You can... They simply need more police officers, and you... You got to make the job enticing. You got to make people want to be police officers again because there's a bad taste in people's mouth that we must acknowledge about police officers. So in order for y'all to get more, because obviously y'all are very thin at police officers. So you can tell because you need people on that subway system, not just standing outside as the subway's pulling up or taking off and looking at people and checking their backs. You need people on the actual subway. You need people around the country like you and you need that 24 hours. So y'all need to start thinking about more personnel. How can you make the job intriguing? If you have to do security guards or do something like that, you need more bodies. And then if you have repeat offenders, then you need to make the punishments more severe. Not say it is acceptable to have 38 people who assaulted transit employees have been arrested over 1,100 times in the city, and that's also with uh, the 542 people that were arrested for shoplifting have committed over 60, 7,600 arrests in the city. That just can't continue to happen. No matter how good our police department may be, it is not going to be able to solve a problem if we continue to let d dangerous people walk our streets. Mayor Adams, are you disappointed that the state isn't footing the multi-million dollar NYPD overtime bill like they have in the past? And are these the kind of state resources that you wanted to see that you were asking for? Yep. Uh, we're continuing conversations with the governor. The governor has been a partner. I want to be clear. She responded immediately uh, when we put in place the subway safety plan and dealing with mental health issues. We always need more resources to assist. Dollars will help a lot. Uh, that is why we funded, uh, after the uptick in January, we funded those 1,000 new officers. And you saw the results of that, a 15% decrease in, in crime. And I want to be clear. We know that there's a combination here. We know that 2% of the crime in our city is happening. It's killing me with the stats. Nobody want to hear the stats. That means nothing. You could tell me it's the safest it's ever been. And then you have an uptick in January. What does that mean? It's not safe to me. Somebody else can, might be like, oh, but it's still safe. But to me, it's not. So I don't want to hear the stats. So we, we know we have over 4.1, 4.2 million riders, about six felonies a day. We know the numbers are not matching how people fear. We must make sure the numbers are right and get rid of those six felonies a day, but also make people feel comfortable and safe in the subway system. Mayor Adams, we thank you for your time. We appreciate thank it. Thank you.